All right, so velocity in position. So again, a velocity is a rate of change. And we said earlier in the last video that a rate of change was kind of specifically talking about the derivative. So we're gonna let s of t represent the position of an object at time t. So then velocity, or v of t, is the derivative of position. And that is the velocity of an object uh, at time t. So if you have the position and you wanna know the velocity of something, just get the derivative. All right, so example nine, particle moves along a curve given by s of t equals 6t squared minus 8t plus seven, where s is in feet and t is in seconds. So what is the particle's velocity at t equals three seconds? So velocity, I'm looking for the derivative of position. So v of t is gonna equal, uh, just do the derivative of this. So 12 t minus eight. So there's my velocity. So I want it specifically at t equals three. So here's my velocity function. So now I'll just plug in three. So 36 minus eight to give you 28. And because they gave you units in the problem, we need units in your answer. So velocity is some sort of distance per time. Uh, so the distance was feet. And then the time unit was seconds. So feet per second. And there's your specific velocity. Okay, let's go ahead and try example 10. So James is standing near the edge of a cliff, little daredevil, uh, with the ocean down below. He then runs straight off the edge and dives into the water. Uh, and the path he takes is modeled by the function uh, negative 16t squared minus 16t plus 96. What is his velocity when he hits the water? So it's gonna be similar to the previous example. We do need the velocity function, but this time they didn't give us the time value. So we gotta figure out what time to actually plug into the velocity once, once we have that velocity function. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that first. So what is his velocity when he hits the water? Well, that means that his position or his height is gonna equal zero because how high is the ocean or the water level? Zero. So take your position function. So negative 16t squared minus 16t plus 96, and we're gonna set it equal to zero. Usually when something is hitting the water or hitting the ground, that means the height or the position is equal to zero. Otherwise, they'd have to give you a specific height. So like, what is his velocity when he's five feet from the um, from the ground or something like that, and then you would set it equal to five or, or whatever value they give you. But hitting the water, hitting the ground, you're gonna set the position equal to zero. So from here, uh, it's just a matter of solving that equation. And a lot of times, um, just because it's been a while since you've done one, uh, calculus students usually look at this and they forget how to solve it. Uh, so this is a quadratic equation. So you can use any quadratic method you know. So factoring, completing the square, or using the formula. Uh, in any of those cases, you know, if you go off with factoring, especially, don't move the number over. You gotta leave it set equal to zero and factor the whole thing. Uh, so first, let's make it a little bit nicer. Uh, negative 16 goes into everything. So we're gonna just divide everything by negative 16. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but if smaller numbers are easier to work with than the big ones. So now you can factor that. And we don't want any negative time. So T is just gonna equal two. Sometimes if you do get two positive values for time, just means that you've hit that particular height twice. Uh, but normally when you hit the water, you only hit it once. You don't usually um, 
like go into the water and come back up when you're falling. Um, yeah, we, we don't usually bounce on the water. Okay, so now we've got our time. So we can get a velocity function. Uh, so again, take the derivative. So negative 32t minus 16. And now we can plug in the time. And we get negative 80. So we don't have any units. We don't know if this is feet, meters, or, or, or what. So if you don't have any units, then you don't need to give any in your answer. Now let's look at the sign, the negative. So the negative, like what on earth is that going to tell us? Like, is that even right? Can you have a negative velocity? Well, the answer is yes. It just means for um, this type of situation, it just means that you're falling or going down. If you had a positive velocity, that means you would be going up. <clears throat> so he's just falling in the negative uh, direction. All right, so let's look at the last example. Uh, this one's kind of a fun one. Particle moves along the x-axis where its position is given by uh, x of t equals sine of t plus cosine of t. You know, don't panic if it's not s of t. Um, the relationship is still going to hold between position and velocity, no matter what letter they use. So what is the position of the particle when the velocity is first equal to zero? So now it's a little backwards. We want to know the position when the velocity is zero. Well, again, we don't know the time. Now, a lot of people, when they read this, they read this as when its velocity is first equal to zero and they go, hey, time is equal to zero. No, that's not what it says. This word, that is not read as time. That starts with a V. Time starts with T, so its velocity is equal to zero. So velocity is equal to zero. So we have to solve this equation, and then once we have the T, then we can plug it back in into the position and get your answer. So V of T, the derivative, cosine of T minus sine of T, is equal to zero. So we're looking for where cosine is equal to sine. Uh, so you can either know where that happens off the unit circle. Uh, if you don't, uh, you can divide both sides by cosine and get one is equal to tangent and work with that. Either way, you should come out with pi over four and then also five pi over four. So there's two values where either this happens or this one, but we want it when it's first equal to zero. So the first time, so just the pi over four. So there's your time. Now just plug it back into position. So sine of pi over four plus cosine of pi over four Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. And so you get root 2. And again, there are no units, so you don't need units in the answer. All right, so that is going to do it uh, for section 3.2. So kind of a longer section. Uh, lots of stuff happening in there. So go ahead and give the homework a try. Uh, email me if you have questions uh, and give it a shot.